Hey guys, Fix It John, guys and gals. Uh, what we're doing today is we're going to install a dual functioning uh, AFCI, a GFCI circuit breaker. And the reason why we're doing that is we remodeled the kitchen and to bring it up to code, this is our dishwasher conductor. I wrote dishwashers because I have a lot of things going on here. I've got uh, other wires up here that I have to install, but uh, we need to bring it up to code, NEC 2017 book. Uh, and to do that, it needs a dual functioning uh, breaker and it has to be a dedicated circuit. Before the dishwasher ran from uh, this breaker right here and it fed the uh, dishwasher, garbage disposal and a receptacle. So we can't have that. Uh, we're just gonna run one uh, straight to the uh, dishwasher so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop it through the box here install this breaker and where this goes is on this uh, ne neutral bus bar that i installed previously so i'll show you how to do how to do that i'm also going to throw in another breaker here this uh, 50 amp, amp breaker that'll feed our two ovens or double ovens and this does not need to be an afci breaker all right, guys, before we do any work, let's confirm the power's off. And it's not. So I'm going to hit the main breaker right here. 200 amp feed. And shut it off there. So, uh, and, and if, if you're not confident with this tool right here, use a, a multimeter. So sometimes a well insulated wire will uh, not allow that to work. Hope you can see that. So uh, on the two main bus bars, nothing. Bus bar, neutral bus bar, nothing. So we're good there. I feel better. All right, guys, I ended up landing that AFCI, uh, GFCI dual circuit breaker here on this side. So I took this white wire that came off the GFCI. I've got it right here. And I'm going to land it right here on this uh, bus bar, this neutral ground bus. All right, bar. I'm gonna strip these wires off and load them up. Too long, I think. The uh, AFCIs are a little easier. Make sure it's under that lug and tighten it down. Next one. Make sure it's under that lug. Tighten it down. And lock it in. There one now this one here i've got to change it because it's part of the kitchen this one here should be easy because all i got to do is take these two wires off here uh run this back over to the uh, neutral bus bar so let's do that tighten that one down We're changing all these out so we're code compliant. We're gonna do these one at a time so we don't mix them up. Stick it in here. Make sure they're nice and tight. This one goes here. This one goes here. Gotta do this one. Hey guys, if you're wondering what I'm replacing it with, it's a Seaman 2020 tandem AFCI breaker. It'll it'll work with this box. There, there that's it. Now all right guys, we're uh bringing this, we're still bringing this box up to code here, and what I gotta do is uh I gotta remove this breaker here because it's uh, tied into the uh, smoke alarm. 
So what I have to do is we'll just pull this, pull this breaker out. And I'm going to install this breaker here. And this white wire, this white neutral goes to the uh, neutral bus bar, which is right here. And I have to find, I have to find the neutral, uh, neutral wire that goes with this uh, uh, power conductor here. So I don't know where it's gonna be. I gotta search and get the right one because I have to hook the white neutral back to the breaker here. I can't see up in this cobweb of, co cobweb of wires to see where the neutral is. So I'm just gonna have to pull this out. All right, guys, and the easiest way I found uh, to find this wire is uh, pull on this one of these conductors until you see this wire here move. All right, guys, what I did was uh, I pulled on this conductor here until I found the one that was pulling on up here. Put a piece of black tape on it to make sure that was it. I mean, I can't see back in here without taking all that crap out, and I really don't want to because it's all tied in with the... Uh, bare ground wire all right guys i gotta knock a couple knockouts out i gotta do uh, one three quarter and two uh, half inch knockouts all right guys i'm also putting a uh, insulating bushing up under it And just all it is is that little plastic cap right there. It keeps from abrasion. All right, guys, we've got our strain relief on with our uh, bushing under it. Just gonna feed these wires back through. And there, you wanna stop at the insulation right there. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and plant these wires in here. Let's see, uh, make sure I'm load power i like to install them before i put the breaker on it's a lot easier and run our uh ground wire back around this way but before i do that i'm going to twist two together and put it in that because i'm running out of uh neutral grounds you can uh double up on your ground wires your bare ground wires all right guys i'm installing this three quarter inch uh strain relief I'll put that big daddy hey in guys, there. Fix it, John, here. Uh, now, since I'm uh, remodeling the kitchen to bring this uh, box up to code, uh, I'm installing a new uh, circuit breaker. It has to have a, a switch, a means of disconnect, either at the oven with a switch or you have to lock out the breaker. So nobody can flip a breaker on while the uh, repairman is here fixing the uh, oven. So he, he puts the, uh, we, it's uh, since 2002, they've required a uh, lockout uh, mechanism on breakers. It requires a lockout, either at the, uh, uh, a means of disconnect, either at the oven or here. So you what it is, is uh, I got this online from uh, Amazon. And it's, uh, the catalog number is uh, ECPLD2. And it's a uh, lockout mechanism. I take that back, I got it at Granger. The NEC book requires since uh, 20 of 02, uh, it has to have a permanently installed lockout me mechanism. So a temporary one, those red ones you see will not work. And how that works is you can either install it after, cause I have to put one right here on this breaker. After you install it and how it works is you, you flip it on and you just close the, the lever so you can close the front door. But if your maintenance man is here, you would flip that uh, breaker. He would close this uh, lever and put a padlock on there. So nobody could come by and flip the breaker on. 
So that'll bring this box up to code. I need one on the range and uh, the two built-in ovens I put in. So they come as two pieces. This is the top, this is the bottom. And you just take it like this, insert it, and uh, just feed it in there and make sure it's in all the way and it'll close. So we're going to put it, put it on this breaker. All it does is it's got little barbs on it. It will stick to, uh, it will stick to the side of this and lock, lock down. And then you cover that with the uh, plate. Just snaps into place and that's all it is. We just install it down here. And there it is. Hey guys, fix it John here. I was gonna shoot this video all in one day, but I didn't have all the parts and I just went ahead and worked on it. So what I have here is uh, breaker locks for my uh, 20 amp breaker for the dishwasher. Let me show you what it is. But uh, here's the catalog number. I got it from Granger, ECPLD1. And you saw me put these in yesterday. I got these in today. They came pretty quick. Uh, just take it. Uh, now, the reason why you need to put, uh, let me recap. The reason why you need to put a breaker lock in is uh, uh, the first thing I'm bringing this box up to code. Uh, I installed uh, double ovens right here and uh, they're hardwired and there's no, uh, it's not, if it was plugged in or if it had a switch to shut it off, I wouldn't need a uh, uh, breaker lock. Same way with the range top, the cooktop. It's hardwired. It used to be plugged in and I didn't need one before because you, uh, let's say the maintenance man comes to work on it, your uh, uh, repair technician comes to work on it, he can unplug it at the source of the electric and work on it safely. Uh, they put these uh, locks on so uh, the technician can come out here, flip the breakers, then uh, put a padlock on it right here so nobody can come along and uh, turn it back on. Uh, now, if it's hardwired like uh, our uh, hot water tank, I, I don't need to put a, a lock on the hot water tank because it's within sight of the breaker box. So... Same way with the ovens. If the ovens were in sight with the breaker box, I wouldn't, uh, per code, I wouldn't need a uh, breaker lock. Uh, these were uh, required, I think, in uh, 2002. Oh, this is what a quick disconnect looks like, and it will be found right beside the uh, unit, whether it's an air conditioning unit or a uh, heat pump for your uh, pool. And this is all it is, just a little copper uh, two pieces of copper that it completes the circuit. When you plug that in, it'll complete the circuit to the, uh, so you would just, the technician would just pull this out and not even worry about the breaker. Bing's are, uh, our, uh, Bing's our dishwasher is hardwired. Uh, we need to put a lockout device on it. And all it is is, uh, this little thing you snap on there and it comes in two pieces. And you just take this little hooked in and you put it up under here and that's your locking device, right? Right there. Snap it in there. Now let's say the garbage disposal. Uh, I don't need one of these breaker lockouts because even though it's hardwired, it has an on off switch above the sink. So we don't need a lockout device for the uh, garbage disposal. Hot water tank, if it was out of sight, say it was in the back, back room, only on a remodel or from 2002 above, it would need a lockout device on it if it was hardwired. So I hope that helped. Uh, I just want to get this box updated so we pass our final inspection. All right, guys, and this is what it looks like with the uh, panel cover on it. So, and also I added a uh, ledger, new ledger, uh, breaker directory, or you can call it a breaker directory. Uh, and num renumbered everything here. But yeah, these won't pull out. They're in there.
and that's what they look like. open it flip the breaker back and close it this uh, panel will pass inspection if you guys find this video helpful give me a thumbs up appreciate you watching